Hey everyone, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another video. So in the last video, we talked about what virtual environments are, why they are helpful, what is the difference between package manager and environment manager. And today we will be talking about Conda, which is both a package manager as well as an environment manager. For Python users, you must be aware of pip, which is just a package manager. And you can do a lot of stuff like pip install this, pip install that, pip install xyz, and it will install that Python library, right? But the limitation of pip is that it's limited to Python, okay? You can only install Python libraries. But with Conda, you can install any Conda package, and Conda packages are nothing but just binaries, and they need not be limited to Python. You can also do a lot of stuff in C++, and Node.js, and you really don't have to worry about anything. The other thing is that with pip, it's just a package manager. You cannot have multi, you cannot handle the multiple versions at the same time in your local box. Only one version can remain in your local box at any given point of time. And that's the job of virtual environments in which you can have the same library with different versions in different environments, right? So Conda can also do that, which pip cannot do on its own. For Python, you need virtual even let me just type that. So yeah, for Python, you need virtual UNV, which is a virtual environment for Python, right? But with, but Conda can handle both of them and that's why it's very famous. And that's what we are going to talk about today. So consider the case wherein you are a software engineer and you're writing some Python code, which you will finally later deploy to some production machine. At the same time, in your team, there are a lot of other developers who will be working on the same project. So you want to ensure that whatever you are writing runs exactly same. And first of all, it runs, successfully runs on all the machines. Now, if you are using Python 3.7, someone is using 3.8, it can lead to a bit of different results, right? So what you want is consistency. And that's where we are going to use virtual environments, okay? So now let's consider the case where we are having this file main.py. And what it is doing, it's importing random and it's generating an array A. The length of the array is random. It can vary from five to 15, all right? So once we have a random array of length in between five to 15, what we are doing is we are printing the statement only if the length of this array is greater than 10. So if you can notice, we can using a new syntax over here, which is the F strings in Python. I think it's from Python three plus, it's not available in 2.7. So um, what it is doing is basically within the codes, we don't have to use percent %s or percent %d and then format like in C++ or other languages, we have the string formats, right? You use percent %s, percent %d and then you give later on the arguments which fill up that space. So over here I can, uh, I'm sorry. So over here you can use these angular brackets and use the variables. So length of a will be displayed. So now if I try to run this, let me just have another pane over here. All right, main dot. Oh, I'm not in that same directory. YouTube videos, Conda hot demo. Yeah. So now, if I try to run this, it's working. Okay. And if I try to do which Python, it's coming from Mini Conda three bin Python. All right. So it's coming from this particular area. And if you try to run that, it's saying that it's three point seven point four. All right. So right now, if I want to see my Conda environments, you can use Conda env list. And I can see that right now I am in base environment. Okay. Let me make this a bit clear. Yeah. So I hope now you can see the star is telling my current environment. I am right now in base. What I can do is Conda deactivate. And now if I try to do with Python, it's coming from user bin Python, right? So now if I try to run the main.py file, it's not working. And let me tell you, this is the same file. We have not changed any directories. So if I try to close this and conda activate base, which Python. So now you can see this is pointing to something else. And on the right hand side, we are pointing to something else. Let me just clear both screens and show you right now. So as you can see, it's coming from Miniconda bin Python, which is my base environment's Python location. And over here, it's coming from user bin Python. The other thing is we are same in the same directory. First of all, as you can see in the both of sites, we are in the same directories and I'm running the same command Python main.py and it's not going to work on the right hand side because it's pointing to user bin Python, which is 2.7. 
whereas on the left we are in a different environment different virtual environment which is the name uh, the name of that is base and it's 3.7 so in this way i mean <laughs> the conda is like really super useful we just have to activate it was so easy conda activate and we are in that environment and everything is pointing to different things now right and in this case now in this way we can basically maintain different different versions of python let me just create another environment for you and highlight this point so over here we are in the base and let's create um minus n oops conda env create minus n let's give it the name python let's say 3.8 so 38 so i'm giving the environment name as pi 38 so that i remember that it's having the python version of 3.8 so this is the command for that and um, on my github repo i have created this cheat sheet of all the conda environments that you will be needing it's also having the installation link so just go through the github repo i will have the link in the video description so um what were we doing okay so we were creating this new conda, conda environment all right it's saying that try the format really i think i made some mistake let me just check all right so it's conda create minus n i'm sorry about that so it's create minus n and now it's asking me whether it can proceed with the installation for python 3.8 i say yes and it should create a new environment for us so this has completed and hopefully we should have one more environment to our list as you can see python 38 has been created and it's pointing to miniconda 3 slash environments slash the name of that particular environment as you can see the ceiling environment is having this particular directory the python 38 is having this directory all right so right now we are in base on this side and over here we are let's activate this new environment we have shall we all right so python 38 is here let me just now type in both of these windows and you can see on the right hand side it's pointing to 3.8 left hand side 3.7 and we are in the same directory, right? Now, again, running the same program, working on both, right? 3.7 as well as 3.8. But now what I did is, basically, I made a few little change in one of the files. Uh, oops, I don't have to write in both of the windows now. All right. So this is one other file that I have created. And let me show you, this is exactly same as um, the main.py. Right. So both of them are doing the same stuff. Let me pull them down. Yeah, hopefully this is a bit more clearer. So you can see I'm doing import random in both, generating array in both of them. Again, the length will be variable from 5 to 15. It's random. But over here in the new.py file, I'm using this walrus operator, if you can see, right? This colon equal to. This is walrus operator. Walrus operator. All right. So this is something which has been introduced in Python 3.8. So it should not work on versions below that. It should complain that it's invalid syntax, right? And the purpose of this Walters operator is very easy. So if you can see this length of A so this, that we have over here. So when we are doing the print, we are again invoking the length function on our array A, right? That's what we are doing. Actually, we are invoking the length function and passing the array as an argument. But my point is we are calling that length function twice. If you can see the new.py file, we are only using it once in the if check and while we are doing that we are storing that value in n and now we can easily access that over here right so this is what we are doing and now if i try to basically oops yeah so now if i try to run oops where am i just give me a second guys yeah so now if i try to run the new.py file what do you think should happen so now on the left hand side, we are in the base environment 3.7 on the right hand side 3.8. So of course the right side should work and the left side is complaining as invalid syntax. So guys, hopefully this gave you a brief idea about how to create different virtual environments using Conda, how to activate, how to install different stuff in different one of them. And as you can see, if I do a Conda list, both of them are having different, different kind of things installed in them. All right. And since it was a big, like really huge list. Uh, I can also list specific uh, libraries that I want to see. I mean packages that I want to see in this case Python. So as you can see on the right hand side, the version is 3.8 on the left hand side, it's 3.7.4.
okay so when you are in a conda environment you can use the conta list to list all python not python packages but any packages right not just python but any packages you can list in the current environment using conda list and all of that is in this conda cheat sheet that i have created and i think you can just go through it like for creating environments you can do stuff like this and for installing or removing packages um, we can again do something like this let me just show you some other ways of doing this so now uh, when you have to install a package in a particular conda environment right so if i'm in base uh, let me just say conda less gdb all right so both of them are not having gdb installed right now and let's say in the base environment i do want to install the gdb version okay so now what i can do is in the base i can say conda install gdb and enter so now it will so it's trying to search the gdb package on the internet on these repos of anaconda and it's saying that it's not able to find them so what we can also do is while we are installing gdb we can mention that please use the conda forge channel so this is one of the other channels which is having a lot of repositories oh i mean a lot of packages from which you can install stuff and now i can do conda install gdp from that particular channel and conda forge has gdp so it should happen yeah as you can see now it's saying 3.2 mb this will be installed i say proceed and very well now if i do conda list gdp it's there right and gdb is not a python library it's something which is used to debug out c++ applications and i have this uh, file let me show you vimeo.cpp so i'm having this file and um, if i try to compile this and this g flag is just to add debug information to our binary so that we can use it in gdb with like i will i'll show you what it is it's really cool uh, let's say okay so the file is a.cpp use the debug information and let me call that a.out the default name so yeah this has been compiled and if i do a.out so we have our binary ready right so now what i'm going to do is use gdb to debug this out and i will show you what so what this program is doing first of all is it's doing the sum of first million numbers as you can see for i from zero to a million increment the sum and then print it all right and what so of course uh, we are using int sum on the line 5 and this will overflow right over here so this will overflow it cannot store the sum of first million in just int the int will overflow after 10 to the power 9 the limit is something like 2144 something 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 so it's it cannot hold something like 10 to the power 10 11 or 12 and in this case we know that the sum of first n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 so this will go up to 10 to the power 12 and it will overflow and i will use gdb to actually reach that particular point when this for loop iteration and the sum value becomes negative that's what i'm trying to debug using gdb and i'm in my uh, base environment so yeah gdb is there now as you can see um, let me just close and show you that gdb is in there with gdp it's coming from the base environment and now um, gdb uh, a dot out and it should read the symbols okay the symbols have been read so this is not a tutorial on gdb but what i'm trying to say is that we are using conda to basically install not just python but other binaries as well not just limited to python so it's a environment manager as well as package manager and that's what is like really beautiful about it okay fast a.cpp the line number is eight so in this case i'm using relative relative numbering so if you see this is the line eight and i'm setting a breakpoint at this line ah so much i have to speak so i have set the breakpoint over there oops uh, actually i should delete it just give me a moment i only want to set the breakpoint if sum is less than zero and that's the power of gdp you can do crazy stuff like this and now if i just say it run i just have to wait guys um, when the overflow will happen gdp will notify me about that because the breakpoint will be hit and at that time we can inspect what is going on let's wait for a few seconds one two three four five six seven eight all right we have hit the breakpoint and what is the value of i right now so it's saying it's six five five three seven so when 
the value of what is the value of sum all right so it's negative overflow did occur hmm. and the value of i right now is 65000 and let's just do the math to understand why this overflow is occurring so 65537 n into n plus 1 by 2 65538 divided by 2 and indeed it's something like 2 into 10 to the power 9 so of course uh, if you try to go beyond that overflow will occur and that's what we have visualized all right so guys um, i think this video was pretty fun it was i really enjoyed making this video and i hope this gave you an idea about how to use conda how to create virtual environments install various stuff in them how the two virtual environments differ and i think i didn't show one thing actually which is pretty interesting all right so um let me just clear both screens so left side base as you can see environment base and py38 so when we are doing which python you can see they are pointing to different places right how it's functioning so if you do conda underscore prefix as you can see the conda prefix is said to so conda prefix is a variable which is set to different paths in different conda environments and that's how it knows from where to pick stuff so in this case in the py38 environment it's the conda prefix is pointing to this particular path in our local box okay so from here it's going to the bin folder and trying to find out the different stuff so uh, i hope this was pretty fun and amazing i did not cover a lot of stuff about conda but i hope it was fun video and uh, it kind of inspired you to get started with using virtual environments and package managers and environment managers in short you should use conda and let me know in comments what you thought about this i mean gdb stuff was something which you might not be aware of but i hope um, this video was like really fun to watch as well. Let me know in comments what you thought about this and I will see you in the next one guys. Happy New Year, happy coding and just enjoy your life. Bye bye. I will see you in the next one guys.